at what point did it get to the D um occur to you like ah F the cameras man I mean let me just be my let me just be me for me I think the only advantage I had a lot of people always ask me this question look like how did you enter Big Brother and I always say I actually never entered Big Brother what happened was hello everyone out there you're welcome to your favorite podcast show here called Tis for Times with your boy KB and I'm here with the big fish himself, <laughs> Mr. Lukele. What's good, my brother, man? Good, man. You all right? Wow, good to see you, man. Thank you so much. Wow, so uh, how's everything with you, my brother, man? All is good. The food is looking good, first of all. <laughs> uh, I'm loving the location. It's a sunny day where we are, so greetings to everyone in Africa. It's your boy, Lukele. So for those who don't know Lukele, right, Lukele is an ex-Big Brother housemate. Uh, and I think this year was um, the season was 2011, right? That's correct. What, what, what was that? What was that? What was it? It was thing? amplified. It was Big Brother amplified, Africa yeah. amplified. Yeah, Big Brother Africa Bruh. amplified. That year was so hot <laughs> that everyone was on the edge of their seat. That's all. That's How all. did you guys pull all those together? Man? Mm. How did you guys pull all together? Baby. Wow, where do I start? It's like. In 2024, right? So we're talking 13 years ago. 13 years ago. 13 years ago. The kids they give birth to then should be in high school now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot of, a Miss, lot of people. Miss, you be old boy. You be yeah. old boy. Yeah. <laughs> in the industry. <laughs> My age is exposed. But anyway, that's not the point. So anyway, yeah. Big Brother Africa. Can I rather start on how it basically started with me? So a lot of people always ask me this question, look like, how did you enter Big Brother? And I always say, I actually never entered Big Brother. What happened was, I was shooting, because I'm an actor, like in South Africa. Okay. And I've been, I've been acting for the last 20, 23 years. So I had this guy, uh, who now has been my friend for more than, more than 13 years. Uh, he's also in the industry, he's a sound guy. And he, at the time, he was driving us from one location to another location when I was shooting one production in South Africa. So what happened was this guy, he saw potential in me. He's like, no, man, you. I feel like when I, you need to do Big Brother. I was like, what is this Big Brother? <laughs> I kept asking. And his name is KK, but I used to talk Does about Does that mean you were, not, you were not following Big Brother show before? I was not following Big Brother. I used to talk about even the house that I've never watched Big Brother. So anyway, so this guy kept putting pressure, KB, kept putting pressure eventually. Um, so there was a show I wanted to work on, one of the SABC shows. And it happened on the, on the day when I got the news that I didn't get the role. I felt very despondent, you know. And then this guy of mine calls me and he's like, look, so what do you say? I was like, hey, my guy, it's time, call the driver. So he calls the driver straight to Endomo where all the producers are waiting for me, <laughs> big, <laughs> big brother. Went in, audition, and then, yeah, the rest is history. And the rest is history. So it means you you didn't really like, um, you, so you've not really been thinking of it, of, ah, I really want to join this around. You know what? Someone just offered you, okay, fine. Let's let's see what's in there. God is good. Let me tell you something. Baby, come to think about it. When I watch Big Brother now, because obviously after my season, I, I did show an interest in following the show because it is a great show. Definitely, it's great in a sense that once you do Big Brother, what I saw in my life is that it opens new channels. Huh. It opens a new level of fame. As I said, Africa, I was already on TV before Big Brother, but even while I was acting, it did not expose me to like a global market of people Hmm. I didn't know that Luke Lee had people following him in places in Nigeria that are so deep Mind that you, you can't even was, imagine. There was no even social media then. Right? There was like there was nothing. So you talk about uh, Nigeria, you talk about Ghana, you talk about a, a whole lot of you know African countries that were following Luke Lee. and the, you wow. know that was a good thing because then it opened a lot of doors in terms of I would I would travel a lot to Nigeria. Wow. I travel a lot to Botswana, I travel a lot to Malawi. And these were all destinations where there were a where there was a strong fan base of people that just wanted to appreciate and honor the clay at the time. 
Um, as we said, the year was 20, 20, 2011. Um, so yeah, let's okay. jump on the let's jump on the, on, on the day of on the day of grand finale. Um, we know that the, the grand finale. Okay. We know that you know you you, you came the second. I mean, and then it was the first <laughs> season of Big Brother Africa where you know they had two winners, right? Two, yeah. Two, yeah. It was two. Two winners. It was two. And you came at the second one as the second person. Oh. How 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 did that come to be? I mean, how did that feel? I mean, very. What happened that day, though? Very good question. Um, you know what? Here's the thing. Tina in the house, we didn't even know that there were two winners. For the 90 days, 91 days we were there, we just thought it's one person chasing $200,000 at the time. The year was 2011. So we just thought it's one. So literally every person in the house was your competitor. Every person you were competing with them. So literally on the 91st day, when we entered the stage, and IK calls my name, as you know me, boy, look like, <laughs> and the crowd roars. And I'm wearing my robe because I, I literally planned what I was going to wear on the day. I, I, was like, like, I, remember I was like, I spent a lot of time wearing this robe in the house. And so this robe has a lot of memories that are attached to the house. So I just, and I knew there was a strong fan base that identified with this robe. So I was actually representing every person. That a actually, group of people. A group of people that loved that robe and that loved uh, Luke Clay's way of, of just being himself. Luke Clay, Luke Clay has a brand for it. Luke Clay has a brand, yeah. Hey. So, so now, I mean, when, so when you got to know that, okay, fine, then you happen to come as the second mm. winner. I mean, Hi. how did that feel? I mean, Maybe. Now, looking uh, at the likes of Karen, <laughs> you know, because look, you, you, want, you want to look at, okay, fine, I think what, be, what makes people love people yeah. in, the, in the house is, how controversial you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the house, did you have any encounter of throwing bottles, breaking heads? <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh were you a romantic boy then? Oh man. Uh, oh man. No, listen. I yeah, I mean uh, I go by many names in the house. Uh Mona, I go by Otoro, I go by <laughs> <laughs> I go by the Drama King, the Zell. You know, so these are names that different people would just call me. These were fans, viewers that were watching and they identified me in a certain way and they would watch because of that. So definitely drama was there. From from the first day already things were happening in the house, man. I was having fun the first day. I was like the lover boy in the first day on the first day. Um, Who were you in love with? <laughs> quite a few. <laughs> quite a few. Means you were playing bro. Means you were playing bro. <laughs> no, listen, guess what? Day one, I get to day one, you don't know no one, KB. So it takes time. It takes time. So uh, it is proven that it takes 21 days for you to be in the house and for certain things to happen to you where your true self will come out. And you understand. So day one was good. And yeah, there was drama. There was drama. There was I mean, a lot of drama. You guys in the house, I mean, it was crazy how, I mean, a group of strangers will all come together, mm. <laughs> fall in love, yeah. create some bonds, yeah. fight, relate, fight, relate, and lick up and all that. Yeah. I mean, how was the experience like? You know, because definitely not, you knowing that you know there were a lot of cameras around. Yeah. I mean, you obviously know you'll be conscious of cameras. At the, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, maybe the first week, second week. At what point did it get to the D? Um, occur to you like. Ah, F the cameras, man. I mean, let me just be my, let me just be me. Because there's no how you're gonna, you you pretend for 91 days. For me, and there's no how you tell me, I uh, know you came with a with a game plan yeah. for 91 days. Man. For me, I think the only advantage I had was, like I said, what I stressed out earlier on, that my background is acting. So as an actor, it's like a natural thing. We know if there's cameras in the room, and those days I started acting 2003. Uh, on one of the biggest productions in South Africa. Uh, wow. It was called, can I name drop? Go for it, go for it, go for it. It was called Backstage at the time, and it was a dream job of mine. So it would be three cams, KB. So what happened was, I always got used to, you know, feeling cameras around me. Unfortunately, with like Big Brother, I get you there, it's like, you don't even know, it's 100 cameras, 200 cameras, we don't know how many cameras in the house, outside, inside. So, but. 
I could feel, I knew. So I would position myself always in certain places where I knew where the camera would be. So I would never find myself sitting in places where I know, is there a camera or not? So whenever there's a camera, that's there's, where there's, I there's, there's, there's even nowhere to, to hide. <laughs> there's, there's no, no way to, to hide. There's no way to hide. So, 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 so psychologically, what, what did that do to you? I mean, psychologically, you know fully whether the whole of Africa may be watching me right now. Listen. If I see anything, listen. They'll pick it up. Listen. You know, if when you look at it from that angle, you can literally lose your mind if you are in there <laughs> and you are thinking that there's like, just example, my mother might be watching and I'm running naked in the house. For an example, now imagine now, you now you think that there's a million or ten million people watching you, watching you, maybe kissing someone or doing something that's just like, that's like strange. You know, it's something that you wouldn't do it in public. Now you're doing it in public. Like on one particular uh, day, I found myself, I had to do my hair. Like, so, so I do put relaxing hair there just to add a bit of wave sometimes. So it's not something that I would normally do in public. You know what I'm saying? It's something that I'm very, very conscious and very private about. Hey, but on that particular day, man, it was a big assignment gave me. So what happened was we were tied to a rope. The whole house. <laughs> Can you imagine? Was it a task though? It was a task, yes. Yeah, so we were all tied to a rope. So now imagine, I mean, I want to do my hair. So I don't have a job. I want to do my hair. So I literally had to now confess to the whole house. Listen, you guys need to help me. <laughs> I need to do my hair, man. So this one was passing me, my relaxer there. So imagine, maybe like 12 housemates or 15 housemates. So, hey, relaxers moving from there, 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 all the way to look here. Like, I'm here by the tap. I need to go outside. So hmm. someone has to put the relaxer man. <laughs> Another one is watching. <laughs> it was a but it was fun. So I think situations like that, actually, that's why I give Big Brother credit because that's where you are able to um, let go of the grave clothes, let go of things like, you know, shackles, things that ways that you wouldn't normally in, in real life set up. Uh, let go of, you know, so it, it big brother basically teaches you just to shine To let that inner Style you come out that real you come out. Do you know? Do you know to me though? My only my own interpretation of big brother game because yeah. a lot of people keep asking What is big brother all about? Big brother yeah. all about to yeah. you? Let me before I say mine to you. What is big brother all about to you? What Man. do you think the game is all about? Because some, some people so I, I heard one guy said I'd rather watch class grow <laughs> than, than just watch some people gossiping about them. What, yeah, are that? Is what do you man, think the game is all about? Though? Man, the game is the game is Big Brother, man. Big Brother. Or let's just say that the show is all about. What's the show all about to you? To me personally, it's a spiritual journey. It is a it is a you can't enter that house if you're not a spiritual person. Otherwise you are messed up. So that's the only language I can use and for me to I have see some made people it. just break down in the yeah, middle yeah, of exactly. Oh god, my daughter is all over. And you were like, you know, see adults. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me to have made it 91 days, listen, to have made it 91 days, that's like pure grace. To make it just 21 days in that house is a war, KB. It's a war because you are stripped of your, your personal belongings. Hmm. You don't have money on you, you don't have a phone, the you phone, don't have yeah. time. You don't, you don't have your contact, laptop, contact you don't to have to TV, you don't have radio, you don't have time. So the only thing you have is Big Brother. Big Brother is your time, your watch, your money, your, only your everything, TV, you have everything, your head, everything. He you know. becomes your God for 91 days. So, you know, it, in a nutshell, Big Brother's God. And I have not saying Big Brother is God. But if but if Big Brother he, was he, God, man, I mean, <laughs> if he sees and knows everything, he sees and knows everything. Yeah, yeah, he sees. He should be demi God. Let's just put that way. Okay, no, he sees all things. Doesn't mean he knows all things. And he all hears, things. he hears, he hears all things. Doesn't know all things. Does not know all things. Though. <laughs> he doesn't know. Um, yeah, but on, yeah, I mean, back to what we were discussing. What is Big Brother about to you? Big Brother is an experiment. Big Brother is a place where you find yourself. If you haven't found yourself. Whoever you are, you can be shy, you can be a musician, you can be an extrovert, you cannot be sure about are you talented, but definitely once you enter there with all the tasks and all the, the activities and, and, and things that Big Brother introduces to the housemates, 
definitely it is a bonus it is there to enhance people's lives man it is there to change and and to and to groom people to like shape them so i fully give big brother a uh, hundred points in my life for what he did for me and oh. um, in terms of the audience the audiences that i managed to reach beyond south africa that you know these are people that uh, not many people would have the luxury of um, being introduced to i mean i i would literally literally after big brother i would be invited to nigeria by some of the biggest diplomats in nigeria like some of the biggest uh, politicians in nigeria that would host me for weeks weeks time in time out because their wives or their husbands fell in love with me they were my fans and you know they just wanted to spend time with me and i'm speaking about nigeria because literally nigeria is the only place and i can say this with my chest out nigeria is the only place that fully embraced me fully in the house so so you want to say your fan base were mostly nigerians i mean people that kept you in the house for those 91 days maybe 65 or 70 percent of them were nigerians right you know yeah. what i mean i can i can i can i can sorry sorry <laughs> i'm just getting a bit emotional yeah but uh yeah so to me though i think big brother to me is like um it's the same it's, it's what um has turned now to the social media now to me i think the, i think the, the show is about a game of likes yeah no um you know personally now i don't know i don't first of all big brother uh big brother is not it's not the same voice anymore <laughs> first and foremost second of all all credits to a booker I've met a booker um, through Karen, the person who won my season. And I remember a booker when I visited the man at Chivateke Tom in Nigeria. And he's the person that always hosted me in Nigeria. And what happened was we were in Lagos, we were in Aja. And then what happened was we were supposed to go to the beach. And Beach, we're going to a place. What was the name? It doesn't matter. I think it was coffee at the time. I can't remember. I think it was coffee. So a booker was the one driving me and Karen from an event we were coming from where Tiba Savage was performing at, um, I think, VI. Yeah, around VI vicinity. At the, uh, yeah, thank okay. you. So, uh, sorry, well, what were we talking about? <laughs> I kind of lost my thought process there. So I was going into you were, you were, whatever the stuff. You were, you, were, you were sharing your, your experience with Big Brother. I mean, what Big Brother, what Big Brother means to you. Okay. So, I, so to me, I think Big Brother, Big Brother means you know it's it's what 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 has turned to social media now. It's a, it's a game of likes. You know, I mean, where you you go there, you, you be you. you, and those who have your kind of features, your kind of characteristics will resonate. Will definitely you know I mean, I mean, go in line with your with your, with your mentality. They'll be like, yeah, but what he's doing is right. Man. I mean. You can just you know, you can just keep going yeah. crazy every so minutes. Yeah. There are a lot of people who are like you yeah. that will be like, no, it's yeah. normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then those who are who are who, <laughs> who are opposite features yeah. from what you have will be like, no, but that's awkward. Yeah, which listen, is why I'm thinking. Well, listen, man. Listen, man. KB, you know, as 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 much as I need to, we are focusing on on Big Brother now. But the same can be said about even movies and things that are happening in the world. But hmm. now we're talking about Big Brother. Life has changed, um, things have changed, Big Brother has changed over time. What has changed in Big Brother? And the, and From your time till now? I think now it's more, it's more, it's more scripted, uh, definitely it's very scripted. It looks scripted. It looks scripted, definitely different producers, different people um, that are not putting the heart and spirit that I fell in love with, you know, the time I was in the house into it. So now it's just more of a money-making situation and people that go into the house kb it's it's like people that are fans of the show 
are yeah. fans of the show. So well, they are watching it for so, for so they've long. been watching, so they are fans. They're, so they're they know idolized. the secrets, they, they know. know. They know. It's like Alcatraz in tennis. <laughs> the one who's beating uh, Pedra and uh, Djokovic. <laughs> you know, it's like a fan. Like, you know, these are all fans. So now, they, they like the whole game plan, they don't have a game plan. The whole game is basically what they've been watching, they've been studying the people that have done it before. So literally when they walk in, they already know which okay fine. I have someone, a manager, managing my things outside. This is what I'm pushing in the house. I'm just gonna have to chill like this, just look pretty, just dance with the camera. They like they know, you know, that is not big brother. That is not big brother. So these guys that are doing brother big brother now, they've destroyed the show completely. Hmm. They've destroyed the audience that fell in love with uh, your Utis of the world, with your Munyas, with your Karens, with your Wezas, with your... Hey man, the names are endless. Like, people that literally you would see the sweat and tears and you would see the emotions, the drama, like real situations, your Elikams, your your Bukelos, your, your Manetas, your Vimbais, your, 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 your Alexes, your... I remember Vimbai too. My that God, is strong, you know, that is strong personality. Listen, there. man, you know, was was was, was she in your era too? Vimbai was Vimbai. in the house. Vimbai was in the house. In your season, me. right? Vimbai, and you know, to tell you how good Big Brother is, um, Vimbai literally did well after Big Brother. Vimbai literally stays in Nigeria as we speak. She's been in Nigeria for years. I think she's producing yes, some shows. Vimbai, in Nigeria. Vimbai, Vimbai is from is from Zimbabwe. She's from Zimbabwe, yeah. And then there's also this other lady too, um, Vimbai and them. Um, and she's also a, it's also a presenter too. I think she's yeah. I think she's from Mozambique. Was it my season? Your season, yeah. Same season with 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 Vimbai. Where's her? Where's her? Uh, from Angola, no? Is she from Angola? Yeah, yeah she was she was from Angola. That uh, that that lady is also doing well for herself too. She's hey? doing well. So so now who 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 were your favorite Nigerian contestant, Nigerian housemates then? In my season or in your season? Remember, there were Remember, only we're, we're talking your season. There were only two. I mean, obviously, Karen was my favorite, and there was Vina. So, um, who do I like more? I like both of them because they were different. Uh, Vina was more urban, more cool. Karen was very raw, very hardcore. You understand? <laughs> she was like my kind of person that I would do with. So, yeah, no, definitely they were dope. They were dope. My, my season, Nigerian housemates were... Every housemate, man, that was in the house. But yeah, I'll be focusing on the Nigerian housemates. Karen was my favorite. So, what, 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 so if I may ask them, what was the craziest, I mean, rumor you heard about yourself right? that, you know, I mean, just recently some people were talking about, I mean, we're talking about, we're discussing you on social media recently now, where, where they were, <laughs> take us through that though, I mean, where they were, where, you just cropped up, you just popped yeah. up all of a sudden now and then where they were talking about, Ah, okay, fine. Um, where's where's, uh, yeah. where's, uh, where's Nuclear? Where's Nuclear? We, 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 want, we want him on this XYZ show kind of thing. That's I mean, it. what do you think? Is there anything in your personality that they think that you think they see will fit in that? I just think, I just, I mean, good, I mean, good question. Um, I, I just think, you know, you know, once you've uh, solidified and set your foundation in this industry, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter uh, where you are. People always remember hmm. because always people always know a good thing. They remember when I gave you witty. No oh, man, where is this guy? Yes. You know which one is this nigga? So you know? and the boat work with you. Yes. Yes. How come it doesn't work for me? Are we are we switch off? No, 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 we're good, we're good. We're are, we, are, we, are we still rolling? Yeah, we're still rolling. Okay. It's, it's still part of it anyway. Oh, I know so it's, it's this, right? It's C. Is it? X, C, O. Is this O or zero? I think he said zero. It's a zero. You can zero. try zero. Okay, fine. I'll, okay. I'll try. If it I have doesn't work, I can go in the manager's so chef again. All right, so have okay. one here. Here's Annalisa here. She's a celebrity chef here, right? Yeah, boy. She's going to give you care of us, right? Yeah. Say, hello, say hello to the camera. Hi, guys. Amazing job. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, 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 um, look like, um, now, down to, to this now, because, you know, I mean, when people see that, okay, fine, they, I think they like you anyway. And I, I saw the way the, a lot of uh, the, the, the number of replies to that. It's on, so, it's on Facebook yeah, that yeah. I saw it. And yeah. I can see, wow. So even after <laughs> about 13 years, <laughs> yeah, yeah. people, some people are still like, 
diehard fans yeah, of yours it, yeah, that still crazy. want to want you back on the yeah, on their screen though. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's crazy though. That's, that's crazy. crazy no, it is. It is. Okay. I mean, listen, man. Like I was saying, you know. Okay, let me be vain about it. You either have it or you don't have it. So I me mean, now, ah, I just have it. it. my man. I just have plant it. it man. <laughs> so my Odua the powerful is always watching out, making sure that you know God is very powerful. He does things in His own ways, in His own time, and I have a feeling that. That setup, it was just a setup for something else that he's, he's planning on doing in my life. Or it could also just mean maybe whatever season that I was in in my life, it was also there just to remind me uh, of who I am and uh, not to lose hope. Mm. You understand? So, yeah, that's, that's just how so, I see things. There's this production you did in Nigeria, I mean, <clears throat> I mean one of oh, Nigeria's snap. movies. Yeah, I mean, how did you find out about this? Yeah, one? we follow you back to back, uh, like bumper to bumper, man. <laughs> so uh, about, yeah. about the production, you 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 were, you were in Port Harcourt then. Yes, no. Did 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 that movie make it to um to to the TV scene? Like a hey. Tell, tell, tell us about tell us about the story. I mean, who 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 hooked you up to that? Shout um, out to um, La Bista. I don't know if you know La Bista. Um, 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 La Bista, La Bista. I'm trying to remember my guy's full name. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will come back to it. But shout out to La Bista. Everyone in Nigeria knows him as La Bista. Uh, shout out to Austin Fani, who directed the movie, the one who called me and told me about the script. Shout out to Emeka. Shout out to Imano. Um, uh, 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 shout out to John Jama, who was also part of the cast. Shout out to Mike Ozorunyo. I hope I'm saying his name correctly. People always yeah. laugh at me when Ozorunyo, I say that. yeah, it's fine. Yeah. No, no, you, you, yeah. Very good. As, very as long good. as you get, you get, you get uh, the, yeah, yeah. the alphabet right, it's fine. Very good. Shout out to the Pitakwa boys that were also featured in the movie. Uh, some of the names were just very long for me at the time. Uh, <laughs> but they know, you know yourselves. You know yourselves. You know yourselves, <laughs> man. Shout out to Nigeria, man. So the movie could tell was my first ever Nollywood project that I was called upon by Austin Fanny. I was in South Africa and he called me out of the blue. Hey, Luke, I'm so-and-so. I'm a director in Nigeria. I've got this script. This is the concept. This is what I can offer you. And I want you to come for a character called Orlando. Okay. Uh, so everything was done. The money was wired to my account in South Africa. Visa was taken care of. Flight, logistics, everything will tell. Flew to PH, driver fetched me, got to the hotel. I think we were staying at the Beverly Hills Hotel in PH. Um, very nice place. Austin came to meet me by the car. Everyone was waiting. <coughs> Took me to my room. And then suddenly, Austin changes his mind and says to me, Duclay, actually, I just changed my mind. I don't think I want you to, to play Orlando. I think I want you to play the boss with a character called Denzel. Hi! Now... <laughs> I haven't even read the script of Denzel. I've been focusing on Orlando, oh, no, so no. Denzel is shooting tomorrow morning. So literally, I had like a few hours to look into this guy. But when I woke up, the first thing I did was run to Austin and say, man, thank you so much for giving me this particular role. I fit perfectly in these shoes. It took me an hour or two just to memorize and get into this character completely. I'm there. When can we start shooting? I was excited to shoot. So when I worked on this movie with Austin Funny, one thing I liked about his style of directing too is that he gave me so much freedom because he saw he's the kind of director where he will check you you will see okay fine this is how this person needs a bit of attention you need to guide them but with me you could see no man this guy he knows what he's doing so he just gave me the whole ground just to perform just so, to do you just to do me man and he, for me I, it, it was freedom it was freedom I like working with people like that. So, shout out to us in family, man. So, um, have you ever taken a role that's uh, that's completely a contrast to your personality, to your personality? My uh, um, let me think. Um, yeah, like I've had Spolanyana, Rose, yeah, you know, yeah, there, uh, my guy that were not at my, where I felt very uncomfortable, uh, but like, which, 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 of the, which of the role was that? I mean, which move, which um, project, project was that? In actual fact, 
when I did the cartel, that that role for me was was very intense because Denzel was a a a a, a drug lord. He was a cartel boss, so he he had situations where he would rape people's wives and just kill people randomly, things like that. So for me, that was a lot to like to like take in, but. I think we all have something in us. We all have that Denzel in us that, you know, if it, if it, if it comes out the right way, if it comes out in, a, in an aesthetic way, in an entertainment, <laughs> you can bring it out. Obviously not in real life. So I think that role also reminded me of the things that I learned in Big Brother, just to let go, let go of yourself and just perform and just be happy, just be free, you know? Yeah, so... Yeah, so that was that was a role that I think that was very challenging. As much as I enjoyed it, but it was very challenging. Um, have you have you ever done have you ever done some projects for free before? I mean, when we say while growing anyway, <laughs> because we, every, every, everyone everyone must have if passed that last stage before. Exactly. Understand. If you consider being paid uh, peanuts by certain productions free, I would consider that free. Yes, I've definitely been in that uh, boat, but. I mean, like I said, everything is a learning curve, and you, it was an early stage in my career. And every now and again, there's always chance takers, or there's people that have good intentions, but maybe budgets are small. And now, when you look at the script, you're like, no, man, this script does make sense. You, you can see yourself taking this thing further. And you might consider it, obviously, if they can at least push you to a certain level, mm-hmm. and not for free, free, free. I've never done anything for free. For free, free, free. No, no, no. Not Luke Clay. Try someone else out there, Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Clay, the brand. I mean, it's the brand I know it's worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, let, let's come down to, I mean, to, well, I, I can see you are, you, you are kind of vast. I mean, you, you're so familiar with Nigerian Nollywood and all that. About this story of, um, Hi, Mr. Ibu. Now that's you coming. Every time, <laughs> Bruh, sorry about that. Um, I just want to just I just want to just to hear your own take about you know this Mr. Ibu's take. I mean, we we heard you know he he had some operations recently. I mean, so, so, surgeries recently where you know they were going to amputate. I think they amputated one of his legs. Yeah. And then I think now we heard you know I mean there's another leg now. Yes. Yeah. I mean so. Hi. He said they really cut the second, the second one now. This is really bad. Shout, shout out, out to I mean, Charles. Shout out to Charles Okafo. Uh, shout out to you, Mr. Ibu. You know me and you. I know you. We met in Pitagua. We met at Chipateke uh, Jam's house. Um, very nice guy. Very sweet. Uh, I feel for you. I've always respected your work. You know, you one of the biggest Nollywood actors. And just to see what he's, he's going through, man. You know. Is 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 very painful to me as a as a fellow desperate, you know, to know that someone like that who should be honored, someone like that who will never imagine that is going that would go through something like that and it's even uh, advertised and it's like publicized on TV everywhere. To the point that they were even asking point, for money from Do you understand what I'm saying? So for me, someone like that should not have to go through that because he has paid his dues in the industry. His foundation is very solid, and definitely there should be funds, there should be certain um, monies that are there available to the man and for him to get the best treatment in the world, for the best uh, doctors to be flown in, or for him to be flown to the best places where he can be treated and where he doesn't have to lose his legs or suffer from anything because. I don't think there's any person in Africa who does not love Mr. Ibu. I don't think so. And do you know, I I, I once watched one of, one of his interviews where he said he he, he confessed himself that um, he was poisoned, and that mm-hmm. was why his, his stomach was you know swelling and all mm-hmm. that. So he said, wow. I mean, I mean, for you to get to that point, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can I but can can I say something though? Well, yes, it might be in contrary to what majority of people believe in. Mm-hmm. I mean. A lot of people, I mean, especially to, to those who are entertainers. Though, yeah. I think there's this sense of entitlement for them mm-hmm. where they think, okay, fine, yeah, I've made you happy, I've done this, I've done, this, I've done that. Uh, so then I don't deserve to, you know, people think, I know, um, artists or actors don't deserve to, you know, to go through pains and all that. But you know, they're humans too. Mm-hmm. They're only doing their job. 
Yeah. And then when they do their job, they get paid for it and all mm. that. That's what some school of thought believe, some group of people believe. I see. That okay, fine. Look, when you're doing your job, right? Your job is you're you're eating from you're making money, you're earning from your talents. I was happy with that. I paid for it. I mean, if I if I bought your CDs then, yeah, or I watch or I went to to the yeah. um, to um, to the cinema to watch a movie and all that it means I've paid to support your craft. You understand? So then, why do why do, to go why do people then still need to then come come back to us and say, um, no, I I need I mean help I need help come and help me this this, this. Meanwhile, there are some mechanics out there who had also accidents during their work, so maybe a car fell on their legs. Yeah. They don't have that that luxury to go to people and say, yeah. hey, while I was doing my job, yeah. I, I I encountered this. So, but. Only when actors are going yeah. there, because I they see. are known. Yeah. Do you no. think there's that is okay? There's a bit of enough. unfairness. Okay, unfairness in that. Okay, no, a good question. Good question. Uh, good, good, good statement. You know, I can be to answer you now. I think to to answer you fairly. Okay, about the whole situation. I think, Mina, I'm not. I don't put too much blame on your your everyday people, your fans, uh, people that are watching. I'm not saying Bona, they are the ones that are supposed to make sure to donate or to to to, to help Mr. Evil. Yes, they can, because I need to their fans if they want to willingly. But I mean, I'm talking about, the, we must talk about the genesis of the whole situation. You know, what caused this whole thing? What caused it is bad management and God pro- Bad productions, that bad contracts that that are signed by actors, you know, signed by actors, where royalties are not included, where things are not things that are supposed to secure them for life, things that are supposed to cover them medically. You understand what I'm saying? So me, I'm speaking more in terms of because this is something that I also go through within the industry in South Africa itself, where you know we are not taught. As entertainers and actors, we don't have facilitators and like mentors, people that that mentor us about um, how to manage our monies and how to invest our monies, how to you know take care and you know where to put our money and 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 and, and also the dangers of this industry that one minute you are hurt, the men- the next minute you might be called. Hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And we don't have those mentors, so you learn as you go. So unfortunately, I think that is what a lot of actors and actresses suffer the brunt of. You'll find that, um, you know, it just gets to a point where, you know, as much as a person is good, but there's always someone else. Because there's an old saying from an old casting director, mm-hmm. woman I used to coach, we just say, no actor is indispensable, you know. Doesn't matter how talented you are, no one is indispensable. So there's always someone sitting in the room or sitting in the house now, busy oh, studying you, you know, busy preparing themselves. A new Alcatraz in entertainment, you know, and and they are busy trying to to like they their focus is you. That's the you understand. They just want to be another version of another you. version a of better you. version of you. An IA situation, like an enhanced. So. Once, once that, once you mess up once, that's when they come in. So, unfortunately, that's the world that we're in. It's, it's very competitive. The industry we're in is very competitive, and also now with social media, it has also changed changed the game completely. So, I think that's 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 also another topic as well. 